the name name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today's sermon is taken from the Gospel lesson from St. Matthew, chapter 25, that was just previously read by Kevin Cornwall. It will complete our series on Jesus' words of the end. Your fellow redeemed in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It was one of my confirmands a few years ago who once said in class, if I'm on Jesus' left side when he comes, I'm just going to run to his right side real fast. I can run real fast, you know. Perhaps the sheep and goat sounded a bit scary to him. It's the conclusion of Jesus' words to the disciples about the end. His final answer to their question when they ask, what will be the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. The sheep and the goats describe what will be when Jesus comes again, this time in glory and as the king of the universe. So we might ask the question, so will I be on the right when the Son of Man comes? What if I'm not? Just think, it's an awesome prospect to stand in front of the glorious Savior, Jesus Christ, coming with all his angels and sitting on his throne. He will be busy separating all the nations and putting me either on his right to go to heaven or on his left to go to hell. That's one time that I don't want to be in the wrong place. So how do those on Jesus' right get there? How do those on his left end up there? Surely a loving Savior doesn't want us to be afraid of his coming at the end of time, does he? Afraid? Anxious? Panicky? No and no. In fact, when St. Paul wrote about the last day, he added, therefore, encourage one another with these words. But pastor. I remember some scary words that John the Baptist proclaimed. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And Jesus didn't help matters any when he said, His angels will gather all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. Pastor, that sounds a lot like me, breaking God's law, my sinful acts, my sinful thoughts, my sinful words. I often feel that I'm going to be on Jesus' left side when he says, Depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. When Kevin read that text from Matthew chapter 25, I hope you noticed something. No words are spoken before Jesus separates all the nations, some on his right and some on his left. Silence. No words will be spoken before the Son of Man separates the nations. Why all the silence? Something has happened before the time when all the nations are gathered before Jesus Christ. Something has happened to each individual on his or her way to Judgment Day. In the account of the Gospel, St. John explains what has happened. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. Jesus later adds that those who believe have eternal life and have passed from death to life. On the other hand, John states... But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. That silence is broken as the one sitting on the throne speaks. Speaking as the king of the universe, Jesus says to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Those on his right are blessed by Jesus' Father, our Heavenly Father. Recall that God the Father had blessed Abraham. I will bless you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
And later, Mo, God told Moses that Aaron should speak the words you've heard many times and you will hear again this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. We are blessed by God. But note also how the Son of Man describes those on his right. Then the righteous will answer him. The righteous. St. Paul makes it clear what this righteousness is all about when he writes... For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. People who believe in Jesus as their Savior are called the righteous. In other words, the people who believe will be on the right side. And Jesus will say to them, come, you who are blessed by my Father. Those who have not believed in Jesus are condemned to be on his left and will hear him say, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. After death, each person faces judgment when Jesus comes sitting on his glorious throne. Thus those on his right and those on his left, all that is decided while a person is living, determined by believing in Jesus as Lord and Savior, those on his right, or not believing in him, those on his left. Because of our faith in Jesus Christ, God will credit our account with righteousness, canceling out the debt of sin that we have all racked up. But you know something, that debt of sin has to be paid. The one who separates the sheep and goats first became a lamb, the very lamb of God, suffering on the cross, the hill, the hell prepared for the devil and his angels. Jesus paid the price for the debt of your sin and mine, suffering the absence of his Father on the cross. That means you, a believer, will be on the right when the Son of Man comes. He will tell us, come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Instead of having a ledger full of sinfulness, God has credited each of us with the righteousness Jesus won for all who believe in him. And then in the illustration of the sheep and goats, Jesus describes the way his people are to live, how we are to live now, filled with the Spirit, when he says, or I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And Jesus then explains, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. As Christ followers, we are called to live our faith in Jesus by proclaiming that faith in word and showing that our faith is real by our actions and deeds. And my hat is off to so many here who came out and helped with port, who came out and helped with the blood drive, who came out and gave generously for our Thanksgiving basket, who put together those Operation Christian uh, Christmas Child boxes and who will help the women in God's service as they begin their preparation to help so many families in our community. All of that showing that our faith is real. You know, after Jesus finished all of his sayings, he told his disciples in Matthew chapter 26, the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. From the cross, Jesus proclaimed, it is finished. The debt of sin is completely paid. As we believe in Jesus, our Savior, our Heavenly Father calls us blessed 
and righteous. We have passed from death to life. That is why we need not fear the end times. Because as believers, we will be on Jesus' right when he comes again. Brothers and sisters, salvation is ours. Amen and amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we receive